Have you ever been watching a TV show and wondered, how does the music end up in the background of these shows? Well, the answer is a little bit complicated, but I've been lucky enough to have music in Hulu shows, Netflix shows, Discovery Channel, all kinds of places. So I'm gonna walk you through the process of how you get your songs in those shows. We'll start with some things you definitely should do, but we're gonna end with some things that you should definitely avoid doing. So make sure you stay to the end of the video to catch those too. In case you're new here, my name is Adam. I'm a songwriter and producer, and every week I upload videos to this channel all about music production. Like I said, I've been lucky enough to have my songs placed a lot of different places, but a big one for me that just happened was getting a song in Pawn Stars, one of my favorite shows of all time, and one that I've always wanted to have a song in. So once that happened, I knew I had to make this video. And this video is about how to get your songs into the shows, but I'm working on a much longer video about making a song from scratch to get put in a show. So if you wanna know when that comes out, make sure and subscribe to the channel. So what are the steps to actually getting a song in a TV show? The first thing you're going to need to do is sign up for a PRO or a performance rights organization. They're responsible for collecting royalties from TV networks whenever your songs get used. And you will get a payment from them every quarter once the episodes actually air. Now, this video isn't about choosing a PRO, so I'm gonna put some resources in the pinned comment to help you decide which one you wanna use, but the main three are BMI, ASCAP, and CSAC. At the end of the day, they all pretty much do the same thing, so if you just don't wanna think about it, go ahead and use BMI because that's what I use and I've never had a single problem. Once you've made an account there, you're gonna to wanna to take note of your IP number because that is the number that you're gonna to need to provide whenever you get a song placed. Once you've signed up, feel free to poke around on your PRO's website, but for now we're gonna move on to step two. This is definitely the step that takes the most time, effort, and research, but it's also the most important, so make sure you pay attention. Now there are two main avenues that you can follow when it comes to getting placements. Number one is getting them for yourself, representing yourself, and number two is going through a library. I mostly focus on the library side of things because that's where I've had the most success getting placements. One thing that's worth considering is that most libraries are interested in picking up music that hasn't been released yet for streaming. So if your main goal is sync, then hold on to that music, don't put it on Spotify, don't put it on Apple Music, and wait until you know whether or not they don't mind if you put it up there. So assuming you don't have any connections in the sync world already, which I'm guessing you don't if you're watching this video, you're gonna wanna start doing some good old fashioned research. The first thing that you can do is just start watching some shows, whether it's Hulu, Netflix, whatever streaming service you have, watch some shows and then wait until the end credits. There should be music listed at the end, whether it's music courtesy of insert library here, there might be some artists and each one has their own library listed, whatever it is, go ahead and take note of what libraries are providing music to that show. Another place that you can start doing research is right on Google. If you search for sync music library, then you're gonna find all different libraries that provide music for TV shows. You'll also find some articles on how to sync your music library to your iPod or your iPhone, but you can ignore those. And if you dig around long enough, you will find contact information for pretty much every music library that's out there. From there, it might be tempting to start blasting off emails to every single contact that you find, but don't do that. Hold on just a little bit. You wanna make sure that you're approaching these people correctly because they're probably getting hit up left and right by artists who want their music in these TV shows. So it's important to know some etiquette. It's worth noting that most people won't accept unsolicited material. So don't just start dry firing off emails with links to your music or especially with attachments. If they've got an email address listed, then go ahead and send them an introduction and ask if they're looking for artists. If they say yes, then send them a streaming link like a private SoundCloud link. The reason that you wanna do this is because if you send attachments or links in your first email, you have a higher chance of getting caught in their spam filter. The reason that you wanna send a private SoundCloud link or something like that is because a lot of people will not actually download files from an email. It clogs up their computer, there's a risk of viruses, There's basically no good reason to do that. Now, if you don't feel like going the library route just yet, there is a way to start getting some placements on your own. Earlier, I mentioned that shows will have music listed in the credits. And one thing that is amazing about that is that you can actually find the artists that have their songs placed in those credits. If you find someone that's in a similar genre to you, it can be worthwhile to hit them up online, tell them that you heard their song in a show and that you really enjoyed it. You can let them know that getting your song in similar shows is something that you're trying to pursue 
And a lot of times they'll be happy to point you in the right direction, whether they have a sync agent, whether they go through a library, or if they represent themselves. If your music meshes really well with them and they're focused on sync, a lot of times they'll be happy to collab with you and actually pitch those collaboration songs to get placed in shows. When it comes to sync and pitching music, I found that sync artists are way more down to collaborate than other types of artists because the more songs that you're pitching, the better. So far, pretty much all of my sync placements have been collaborations with the same handful of artists. Mainly one other producer and songwriter that I work with on almost everything. We have tracks in multiple libraries together and almost all my placements are split with him. But we work so well together that it's totally worth it. While it may seem scary to reach out to libraries or other artists, keep in mind that their job is to create or find music to get put in TV shows. So if your music fits the bill, they're gonna be happy to help you out. Think of it as you doing the library a favor by creating music that they can then go out and get placed. Without the music, none of this stuff happens. So again, don't be shy. If you're having a hard time getting your songs in libraries, then there is one other way that you can do it, and that is representing yourself. Earlier, I mentioned that you can find artists and libraries in the credits of shows, but one other thing that you can usually find is the music supervisor. This is the person that greenlights all the music selections for a show's soundtrack. They ensure that the music in the episode fits the vibe if they're not handpicking it themselves. If you do some digging, you can usually find their email address or some way to contact them. Once you've found a way to get in touch with them, you can personally reach out and just say, hey, I love this show, I'm a big fan of the music, and my music's actually very similar, so if you're looking for songs for the next season, then I'd love to send some your way. If they're interested in picking up your songs from there, then they'll probably take the lead on the conversation. So I suggest keeping this casual, light, and not circling back like 10 times. If they're a fan, then sometimes they'll send you paperwork to start licensing the songs. If not, then they might write back with some feedback or they just might not respond at all because this is a numbers game and you're not going to just land one placement for every email that you send. If you don't hear anything back, then feel free to just move on to the next one and keep trying to find good matches. Now, like I've said before, I've had more success getting songs placed through libraries, and that's for a pretty simple reason. Music supervisors are working from a project to project basis, and they may or may not even be assigned to the show that you're hitting them up about by the time they get your email. They also just might prefer not being solicited to, and that's where libraries come in. The music supervisors can just open up the library, go through a bunch of songs that are already offered up for sync placements, and just handpick the ones that they like without having to go back and forth on email. If you're just Starting out, I would totally suggest doing a healthy mix of both. There's no harm in putting your name in the ring with music supervisors or with libraries, so just get to work, get networking, and start introducing yourself to as many people as you can. Like I said, this phase of the process takes the most active work, but it's also the most important and the most rewarding. But once you get that ball rolling and you start getting placements, it is going to get easier and easier. If you're finding it tough to make any inroads with music supervisors, libraries, or other other bands, then what I suggest you do is send your music to some people in the industry or your friends that you really trust and get honest feedback. If you're getting no's everywhere, don't give up, but don't underestimate the power of leveling up your music. Once you're in a library and you've got some collabs with other artists and you've stuck a few placements, it's time to start nurturing those relationships. So when you get your PRO statement and you see that there's some placements in there, write to the people that you worked on those placements with and just send them a note saying, hey, I saw that our song that we worked on is in so-and-so show. Congratulations, I'm really excited. If you're looking to work together on some more music, I have availability. Everybody's happier to hear from you when your work just got them paid. Now, before I move on to some things that you should 100% avoid doing, I know that that was a lot of information. So if you have any questions or you want me to clarify anything or go deeper, then leave a comment and I'll try to answer every single question that y'all have. So now that you know what to do, let's talk about some things that you should avoid. The first thing that I would encourage you to avoid is getting wrapped up spending lots and lots of money getting started in sync. There are lots of smaller libraries that will gladly take money from you in exchange for offering to pitch your songs. That usually comes in the form of a subscription fee. And I'm not saying that these are bad services or bad libraries, but I will say personally, I think the money should come from the client side. So if there's a network that's paying for the songs, I would prefer that the library takes their cut out of that 
than from their members. So I would be wary of these pitching services. And if you've gone on there for months and months and months and have not placed a single song, then maybe move on to something else. Just to give you an example, my last BMI statement had about 75 placements between all different countries, networks, etc. But before I started joining the more serious libraries, I was on a pitching service and I spent months and months pitching one song at a time and did not land a single one. Similarly, there are tons and tons of people who will gladly take your money to teach you sync master classes or put you in a sync mastermind group or whatever it is. Now, I'm not saying that you won't learn something from these, but sync music isn't that different from regular music. There are tons and tons of examples of sync songs that you can listen to just by watching TV. And the business of sync is a lot simpler than people would let on. If you find yourself in a sales funnel doing a sync course, then maybe you're spending more time doing modules than on working on your music. So just don't get wrapped up in that world and just focus on doing what you need to do to make better music and just get it placed. The next thing I would encourage you to avoid is spamming the same people over and over. Once you've sent a message to a music supervisor or a library or an artist, move on for a while. Please do not circle back and follow up with the same 10 people over and over again. Yes, you might want your song in a specific show or or on a specific channel, but if it's gonna happen, it'll happen. Emailing them over and over again is not going to help. I had about 100 placements before I got the one that I was shooting for, which was the Pawn Stars one. Super stoked about that. Sorry, but it's true. And you know, it did take that 100 placements before I got the one that I was chasing, and that's okay. And the next mistake that I wanna warn you about is expecting a big check the first time you get placements. The first few quarters of my BMI statements all had less than $20 on them, and I wanna say my first one was like 30 cents. But over time, they've gotten bigger, and I've even been lucky enough to get paid in advance for some of my sync work. That means I've gotten paid upfront to make music for TV networks, and the check comes in as soon as I turn in the song. So if that first check is only for 45 cents, don't let it discourage you and just keep working. If you quit at that point, then you're missing out on big opportunities later on down the road. And the last and worst mistake is spending too much time not putting yourself out there. If you've built up a personal library of 100 sync songs or 75 sync songs or whatever it is, then you need to start hitting the street, talking to people and getting those songs out there. I know so many writers and producers who have put off that part of the process for far too long. As artists, sometimes we have a tendency to want to stay in our little cave and just work on music all day, but at the end of the day, you need to get out there and start landing some placements. So get to work, start doing your research, start putting yourself out there, and start trying to make connections in the world of sync. If you want to learn some more ways to make extra money as a producer, then this video right here is for you.